Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, you're going to see how we can take our storefront that has a list of products. And when someone clicks on this, we'll, we're going to redirect through the Stripe checkout flow to accept payment for this product on behalf of the creators that are using this platform. So we're going to generate a new controller. We're going to say Rails G controller, and it's going to be in the store's namespace. It's going to be called checkouts. So we already have a checkouts controller, but in the, the store's namespace, we want a separate controller that will be accessible through these subdomain routed or custom domain routed um, uh, applications. So we're gonna say resource uh, checkout. We're gonna jump over to the checkouts controller that is in the stores namespace. So we're gonna say module stores, and this is gonna use the store base controller. Let's add a create method here which is gonna create a checkout session using Stripe. So we're gonna say our checkout session is Stripe checkout session.create. And this checkout session is going to be the thing that has a URL and we're gonna redirect to that checkout session ultimately. So this is an API call to Stripe to create a checkout session. Payment method types is an old feature. We don't actually need to specify that anymore. That's gonna be derived automatically based on the customer's location and a number of other things. So what we do wanna pass here is the mode being payment. We wanna pass the um, success URL, cancel URL, and we also wanna pass some line items. That's gonna be a list of items. And then that should be a good start. So the success URL, we want the user to probably come back to some URL that is related to this publicly accessible route and thank them for their purchase. And so what we could do here is have um, the show route for the checkouts controller here be the success URL. So let's do, yeah, store checkout success URL. No, we're gonna, let's call this the store checkout URL. And this should have a method here called show. And this is where we want to like just render uh, thanks or something, right? We're gonna, we'll, we'll figure that out later. And the cancel URL, we want, the bring, we want to bring them back to this uh, product listing, which is gonna be on the store root URL for this domain, which is like the current domain. So we would need to figure out whether we're on a custom domain or not, but we can start with, we can start with this. So the line items, now this is gonna come in as params. So we're gonna have the price that we wanna purchase. And we're also gonna have a quantity. The quantity for now is just gonna be one and the price will be in params price. This checkout session is going to be created on the connected account. And so we need to know the Stripe account ID for the current store. So the way we can get the, we have at store and that store is going to have access to the user.account.stripeid and that should give us the, the correct account that we want this checkout session to be associated with. So let's update our product listing and add a button to each of our products so that you can click on the button and that will bring you through the checkout flow. So we're gonna remove these links and instead we're gonna have a button right next to the price here. And this button will bring us to the checkout flow. So this is gonna be a form with the action um, slash checkout. Method is post. We need our input with the type hidden name authenticity token, form authenticity token, another input with type hidden with the name price. And the value is gonna be equal to product.stripePriceID. So that's gonna be the ID of the Stripe price that we're sending into the controller and that'll ultimately be used when we're figuring out what to charge them for. Okay, so we need to add a button to this form. So I'm just gonna grab a button from here and we'll say this is of type submit. And we're gonna say this just, the button text is just gonna say buy. 
Okay, so if we come back over to our storefront, we now have this buy button. It's kind of ugly, but um, it works. Now, I'm noticing that as I enter, I'm, I'm, there's like a hover effect here that's happening. And so that hover is because we have some sort of, um, yeah, we have this absolutely positioned inset thing. So let's remove that. And now we can click on buy. Okay, so this is fantastic. Now we're redirecting through the checkout flow. Undefined local variable or method store checkout URL. So what we can do is go to slash blah and see what our routes are because we should have a checkout path that is namespaced for store. So yeah, we have two methods here that are called checkout path. So I think what we want to do is go to our routes and name this as store checkout so that we have access to that over here. So then we click on buy. Uh, okay, so it looked like it did something, right? And if we look at the network tab, we did get a response back. Let's look in the server logs and see what's going on. We had our post request to checkout come in and then with the right stripe price ID, no template found for the checkout controller create. Ah, okay, so we are not actually redirecting yet. So checkouts controller. And after we create the checkout session, we need to redirect to checkout session.url, allow other host is true, status is C other. Okay, so then let's try this again. Come down here, click on buy. And okay, so now we, okay, so now in the logs, we see there's a cores error for CS test and we see a 403. That's because we need to disable turbo on this form. So we're gonna say data turbo is false. Okay, and then when we refresh this page, we will now see, uh, click on buy, we should be redirected to checkout. And we are, fantastic. Okay, this is not working anymore because we're not on the ngrok subdomain. So the image that was uploaded is not gonna show through. Um, but okay, so we have test at example.com, uh, the 4242 card, sure, okay, whatever, fill it all in uh, and click on pay. So after we pay, we should be redirected back to that store URL where we're gonna build out this thank you page but for now, I think it's just gonna say thanks. It's just gonna print out thanks to the page. All right, so we see thanks, that's fantastic. So now what we could do is look up and find what product they bought, render that on the page. But at this point, we are successfully going through the checkout flow for our product listing, which is pretty awesome. So we now have um, some buttons appearing down here. We've also got our prices. Let's move the button down below so that it's a little bit uh, so it's a block button and it goes all the way across the um, the entire bar there. So we're going to edit the style of this button so that it's no longer inside of this same div. Okay, we're going to create a new div. And we're going to remove the P tag. All right, let's see. Okay, so we moved it to the bottom. That's great. All right, so I think think we want to change this to W full and okay. So now it's the full width and also let's give it a little bit of margin top. All right. That looks pretty good. Uh, the other thing is that ideally this button color is the primary color for the store. So that is going to be a little bit trickier because these colors are based on um, this BG Indigo 600 is based on a tailwind color, but we want the background to be a custom color that was passed in by the user when they created the store. All right, so for now, the background color is BG Indigo 700, but we, what we wanna do instead is come in here, remove all of the, the background stuff and update it with a uh, style directly. So we're gonna set the style to this background color, which is gonna be uh, at store.primaryColor. All right, let's see if this works. So now when we refresh the page, 
All right, was that the color of the store? I can't remember. Let's come back over here to store and edit the store. I guess that was the primary color. Let's pick a better primary color that is more fun. Now let's say save. If we come back over here and refresh. Now that's our new primary color. That looks great. Now we could probably do some fancy math to figure out whether or not we should show white text or um, like a darker color text so that it's um, there's more contrast and it's easier to see because this white on the screen is really tough. Uh, but at this point, we have a pretty solid little store here that is uh, branded as so and so far as that we have one color that's coming through. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and I think the other thing that we might want to do is take these primary colors and every time we update the store, I think we want to also update the Stripe accounts brand settings that are related to this connected account so that when we redirect through Stripe checkout, the, the brand colors continue to match. So every time we update a store, we'll go back to the stores controller here. When we update this store, let's also update the account. So let's say Stripe, like right now, recall that we have this Stripe account class that helps us create accounts. Let's say, let's make a new one that says like, um, that says update account branding. And then it will just, it'll just know that it needs to use the store because we have only one store. Um, I think actually that's actually pretty close. <laughs> okay. So the, yeah, so we're going to create a new service called stripe account dot new. And this takes in the uh, the connection. No, this takes in the account. So current user dot account. Now service dot update account branding. All right, this will work for now. We're just gonna make a synchronous call to the Stripe API to update the branding. So inside of this class, when we call update account branding, we're gonna say um, return if. the store is nil. No, we'll return if, yeah. So the store is account.user.store. That should get us over to the store, right? So we have account, the account has a user and the user, so let's say has one store through user. Now we can just say account.store if the store primary color is nil or the store secondary color is nil, then we're gonna return early. That will protect us if we have not actually edited the store initially. And then every time we update the store going forward, it's gonna set uh, an account primary and secondary color. Now let's go look at the account update settings on the Stripe API. So stripe.com slash docs, uh, we wanna see accounts update. And I believe we can pass in these settings under the settings argument under branding. So settings, branding, primary color, secondary color. So uh, this is gonna be account.update, pass in the account ID, and then we pass in um, settings, branding, primary color, secondary color. So that should be pretty cool. We don't need to store anything from the result. And let's just see if we can get that working. So every time we update the account, so let's make the secondary color some like light pink, I don't know, save. Okay, undefined method, primary color for account. Oh, right, this needs to be store, uh, store. Okay, refresh. All right, that seems like it did something in the background. So if we come over to creators and refresh, now when we click on buy and we're redirected through checkout, look at that, the checkout page is super bright, okay. Uh, so in order to match exactly match the styling on the previous page, we will want to use the secondary color for the button. So on our products index page, um, instead of primary color, we want to use secondary, secondary color there. So that back over here, it doesn't look, yeah. So now you have like this kind of like, I don't know, fuchsia <laughs> button. And when you redirect, you now see like this wild green background in the fuchsia button to pay. 
it aligns a little bit better, but we probably, maybe we want to have like a big green bar at the top or something that will give even more visual indication uh, as we go through and update the brand settings. So I think this is a pretty solid stopping point. We now have a full checkout flow. It's branded, it matches uh, pretty closely. And yeah, so we're gonna continue building out this creator platform. Thank you so much for sticking around. And uh, if you are enjoying this, I would really appreciate thumbs up and a subscribe. Thanks again so much for your time and attention and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.